Hey everybody, this is Matt. I'm making a Guild Wars 2 video. Uh, this video is talking about the spring quarterly update that was just posted on the Guild Wars 2 website. And um, this video is, um, this update is really important for me because uh, I bought the expansion Heart of Thorns and I played it for a month and I got so burnt out on all the grinding involved in playing the expansion and just a lot of the little intricacies of the expansion that I couldn't go back to the game and I had a lot of trouble going back to the game um, since then since uh, last year and I'm really really hoping I'm I, I'm so hoping that the spring quarterly update is the first big update this year in Guild Wars 2 will um, change some stuff around that will make the the expansion content more fun and um it, I don't I don't see I don't think there's any patch notes up right now but they did post this um this really lengthy uh article um uh, from I guess from the guy Mike O'Brien um and I'm going to read through it and just give my honest reaction to everything he's saying so let's just get into it I ho I'm hoping this don't take 15 minutes the spring quarterly update hi community Today we're happy to launch Guild Wars 2's Spring Quarterly Update. This update is about reducing grind, that's good, increasing rewards, that's good, and getting to the fun faster, that sounds amazing. It's a rework of many parts of Guild Wars 2 Heart of Thorns, sort of a set, wait, wait, what? It's a rework of many parts of Guild Wars 2 Heart of Thorns, okay. Sort of a second take on the expansion, okay, that sounds pretty good. It's a result of an effort we undertook across all parts of Guild Wars 2's team to pause new development for a while and instead focus on improving the existing game. That's what exactly needed to happen. That is exactly what needed to happen um, like the first month or two afterwards. By this point though, I mean six months later, we should be getting new content though. Um, the open world content of Guild Wars 2 Heart of Thorns is largely built around event chains. Well, yeah, all four maps are big meta events. They give players a shared purpose, but they've been a problem for rewards. When the best way to earn experience in map currency is to play a long event chain, you have to play the game on the game schedule, not your own schedule. That's exactly right. That's not Guild Wars. That's not Guild Wars. With this update, we we split a lot of the rewards out of the event chains. Okay, that's interesting. You can drop in and drop out and still get rewarded. Then we beefed up the non-event rewards to ensure that there are a lot of other effective ways to play the game too. Mm, okay. In updating the jungle content, we focus not just on the rewards, but also on the experience of playing. Especially when exploring off the beaten path. Mm, okay. We adjusted waypoints to make them uncontested and reduce downtime. Okay, so are, I guess are are they saying that they made it so you can always travel to every waypoint? Because sometimes, like if a waypoint's contested, you just can't travel there, and that's been a pain in the butt in like the uh, a raw map, where like you you need to get to a place, but it's like always contested. We tweaked balance and improved difficulty scaling on a host of events and encounters. Okay. We made the adventures that are scattered around the jungle more accessible. Okay, that's good because there were certain ones like the, the 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 gun the gun show or whatever it was that was just almost never accessible, and then you, and it was so ridiculously hard. Removing a bunch of locks so they stay open more often, and making their compet completion thresholds more forgiving. Okay, well maybe I can get that one then. Then we really beefed up the way players earn experience. We increase the experience gains from all max level creatures by 50%. Okay, so that's for like masteries then, I guess. Including their exploration bonus experience. But we already got that, so I don't know how they're going to retroactively, whatever. I don't know. We double the experience earned by completing silver and gold tier adventures. Okay, that's good. And, re and we removed an old anti-bodying system that diminished rewards from all jungle maps. So now you can play the same events as much as you want and still get full rewards. Okay, so there, so in the past, um, the way the system was is if you sat around and didn't do events, your overall like participation level in on the map would decrease over time. So I guess this is saying um, it doesn't. 
I guess that's the saying. So what that means is you could probably max out your participation level, which uh, doesn't take too much work, and just and just sit there on the map the whole day. Now, of course, the game has does have AFK kick, so. This change will increase the amount of the average event experience by another 30%. We're fixing some other issues from Guild Wars 2 Heart of Thorns launch. We're bringing more rewards back to dungeons. What? What? Dungeons? They actually mentioned dungeons? Okay, this, this is something. Doubling the dungeon token from daily bonus chests. Whoa. And introducing a new repeatable achievement that awards 5 gold and 150 dungeon tokens for every 8 unique dungeon paths you complete. <gasps> what? What? They're actually focusing on dungeons? Oh my god. It's, it's a miracle. Dungeons are dead. Oh my god. Okay, sorry. We're also substantially reducing scribing costs, both by reducing the material requirements on recipes and by increasing the supply of key materials so that scribing can be for everyone not just for players with a guild supported them now I mean I will say this though scribing is still mostly just for a guild because you don't have you don't have player housing you don't have player housing so unless you are able to decorate the guild hall which most guilds only allow like a few people to do it scribing is kinda dumb you're gonna be spending all your time and all your money making uh, decorations that you can't even use. That's why I don't really like it. Now, if they gave, her play gave us player housing, I would bend over backwards, pay probably $60 for a new expansion just to get it, and uh, be happy as a mule. Okay, anyways. With the Guild Wars franchise, we've always tried to get players to do uh, to the fun quickly. And not just to the fun, but quickly to the new content too, so you can play with your friends. Yet the max level content in Guild Wars 2, Heart of Thorns, and the Living World releases is gated behind all the base game's leveling and equipment acquisition. Which isn't much, let's be honest. Guild Wars 2 is one of the easiest games to level up in. You can basically do anything the hell you want. I mean, you can just go around doing hearts, you can, you can, you can, uh, you can do World vs. World, you can, I mean, I mean, there's so many different ways. I mean, uh, heart, I mean, I don't know what the problem is. That base game leveling experience is still a lot of fun. But some, and the best part about it is you can go to any map. I mean, you basically don't have to leave a map a lot of the times. I mean, what I mean is like you can be level 60 and go to a lower level map and still get plenty of experience and level up there. I don't see what the issue is here. But sometimes as a player, you want to see the new stuff now. Oh, Lord. This is, this is making me think of like World of Warcraft where they're like scrolls and stuff while still playing through the older stuff at your own pace. With this quarterly update, we're giving all existing and new Guild Wars 2 Heart of Thorn purchasers a max level character boost, so you can immediately get one of your characters to the new jungle and living world content. Okay, I'm going to have to come back to that because I have mixed feelings on that, dude. I have mixed feelings on that. This new max level boost item will be delivered to you in a new free shared, a free shared inventory slot? Oh, shit. Excuse my language. That's pretty cool. I like the inv I like the uh, shared inventory slots, but they've always been too expensive for me to really want to get. So I don't have a lot of money. So a free shared inventory slot is really nice, which is yours to keep even after you use the character boost. Another thing I love about this boost item is that you can test it on as many different characters you want before consuming it. So if you haven't done so, now you can check out how every profession in the game plays at max level. But couldn't you do that in like uh, player versus player mode, PvP mode? Because aren't you scaled level max level, and you can choose any weapons you want there? Isn't wouldn't that be a better way of doing it? Oh, okay. Anyways, this quarterly update also has a lot of world versus world changes. Oh lordy, and it marks the start of a live beta testing of world versus world development. In March, we asked the community to choose world versus world development priorities. This update included improvements for each of the community's top four stated priorities. We're launching a live beta test of World Linking, a new system for grouping worlds together for the purpose of World vs. World matches. <gasps> that sounds good. They needed something like that, dude. To create combined worlds with larger and more balanced populations. Okay, that's good. That will start this Friday at reset time. Mmm, I'm really interested in that. 
Here's the problem. For a long time, it's been like, well, what server you want? Oh, I gotta transfer to the tier one server. Oh, but no, we can't have people transferring during the seasons because that's unfair. It's it's just a dumb system. We're launching a live beta test, the World vs. World reward tracks. They're similar to PvP reward tracks, but with a World vs. World focused rewards, including a new World vs. World specific armor set. Nice, that's cool. So, and to make earning rewards more fair, we're launching a new system that allows squad leaders to direct participation credit to squad members on special assignments who otherwise wouldn't get credited. Okay, that could kind of be abused, I think. And a little worried about that. We made some targeted skill balance changes for World vs. World, including making it harder to strip stacks of stability. That's nice. We're also launching a series of improvements on the Desert Borderlands. Okay. You already know that we're working to restore the Alpine Borderlands next. We'll ship Alpine as soon as it's ready, not in a quarterly update. What we work on after that is up to the World vs. World community. We'll pull you. Okay. In addition to the things I've talked about here, the update includes a large series of improvements to Fractals and PvP, plus a full balance update for skills, a new legendary shortbow, eh, the long-awaited final tier of the legendary backpack, eh, new daily achievements, okay, that's cool, uh, looking for group improvements, nice, a new raid lobby, nice, and more. It's more than I can hope to cover in a blog post. We have 30 pages of release notes, oh, 30 pages, sorry, for you to read today, but better yet, come join us in the game and check out all these changes for yourself. Okay, so, I mean, a lot of this stuff sounds really cool, but I, I gotta go back to this thing, okay? Okay? They're giving everybody, um, they are giving everybody, um, all existing in New Guild Wars 2 Heart of Thorns purchase a max level character boost. This is, okay, there's some issues with this. First off, they can't ever increase the the level. I mean, okay, okay. If they ever increase the level, let's say they increase it to level 100, okay? Um, now this max level character boost is like the easy way to get all the, get those levels. While it could be really hard for other people to go from 80 to 100. Um, also, this game has never been hard to level. It's never this game. If you ask any MMO player and you ask them what game is good for a casual person just trying to level up, and they go Guild Wars 2, they're gonna go Guild Wars freaking 2, dude. I don't understand why we need a max level character boost. I mean, they've given us multiple like auto level 20, auto level 30. If you have one of your characters just logging in every day, you're, you're probably getting other uh, tomes and knowledge and stuff, so you can get levels off of that. I had so many tomes and knowledge stored up, um, waiting for the expansion to hit. When the expansion hit, I was able to go at instant 80 level revenant without even having to leveling it up. And I didn't need a max level character boost. You know? I guess I shouldn't be complaining. It's not the end of the world or anything. It's just a weird ideology that becoming more and more apparent. You know, more boosts, more level things. They spend so much time on these low, on these other maps. You know, I don't know. And, and they've created a system where you don't, where the, the lower map, lower level content is not invalidated by you being a higher level. It's perfectly valid to go back to those areas. So why do they want people to skip all that stuff? I don't I don't understand that really. But that's their decision. Overall, this update looks pretty cool. Now this is not the 30 page thing. I'm not probably not gonna read that on the thing. There is some really cool stuff. Dungeons people! They're updating dungeons! Okay, got that out of my system. I mean I can't I can't believe they ever went back to dungeons. It shows that Arena is listening. To what we think. And that means a lot, dude. And I'm really interested to see how they uh, affect the Heart of Thorn maps. Kind of, you know, you know, um, you know, what they do with that stuff. Uh, it sounds good in what they've, ri they've written here. But I want to see it in action, too. You know? And, um, I guess a lot of it had to do with the Heart of Thorn stuff and some you know, max level stuff. Um... It sounds good. It sounds good. Would this be the, would this be the uh, the miracle patch? I don't know. Only time will tell. But this sounds good. Good good job, Arena. That good job. 
Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video, and I hope you have a really great day.